the play. A fouling on penalty with a single point. And the first play of the game gives us a one to nothing lead for the and the 15 yard penalty uh, on the piling on. We should bring the ball out to the 40 yard line. Hamilton Tiger Cat. The scoreboard is not giving us anything official on this yet, but it is one to nothing, and they'll tack the 15 yard penalty onto that, and the ball will come out to the 40 yard line. So it is now official one to nothing. Hamilton over Winnipeg. Referee Ray Boucher, a 25-year man in football, retires after handling today's football game. Kenny Plain for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with Ramey, Lewis, Perkins, and Cooper. Cooper flank right. Nielsen, the left end, number 28, is split off. Kenny Plain gives to Leo Lewis, and he runs into his own blocker there. Herb Gray and is dropped on the 42 and a half yard line. He picks up a shade better. It's Herb Patera coming over to make the stop. The barrel kind of half pushed him as he tried to slide by him. Now for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, number 71, Farrell Funston at right end. Number 28, Kenny Nielsen. will split on the left side with Rigney and Thorson, the left guard and tackle. Uh, Gray and Piper, the right guard and tackle. Uh, Hamilton defense for you in just a sec. It is second down and eight yards to go. Ramey comes in motion to the right. And Kenny Plain goes to Pearly Perkin, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, and a great uh, play by the secondary, Herb Patera. He guessed, and he guessed right. I think right now, too, Johnny, they're guessing that uh, Kenny Plain isn't going to try and fool around with any passes at this stage. He's not going to test that tough win. And you could see that they had an eight-man line in there. They didn't pay too much attention to all the faking that was going on. So here's Ed Ulmer kicking into the wind with Henley and Grant back on their own 40. And he puts a good one into that wind. The wind holds it up now. Here is uh, Henley on the 47. He has dropped on the 48-yard line. In there to get him was Big Frank Rigney, the eight-year veteran and a five-time All-Star. A 22-yard kick and a two-yard run back. All the Hamilton Tiger Cats come out offensively. Will they start throwing early and long? In case they do, Thornton and Jansen both set out wide, ready to go deep. Joe Zuger is at quarterback. They give in here to Dick Cohe. Cohe is hit from the side and stopped on the 51-yard line. He got about two yards on the play. So it's Chris on and Patterson will be the end. And uh, taking a look, uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have figured that they're, Hamilton, they're going to run, and we can see... Al Miller, pick it out. There he is, number 31. He sees that play, and he blows right in there for the tackle. Here we go now with Joe Zuger back to throw. The ball is knocked out of his hand, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have recovered on the 47-yard line. And the thing about that, Johnny, although he had his arm back to throw, at the time there was no passing motion made. This would make it a fumble. Al Miller came in there to... Pick it up for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They rule that he recovered on the 48-yard line. Well, that's a big game against that wind, and uh, Winnipeg has found one way, one way to move against it. And that's the first uh, big break of probably what will be many here today. There goes Kenny Plain with force and 55 setting up at guard. And here comes Plain rolling to the right as he gives to Lewis, cutting back inside, and Lewis puts his head down and he drives to the 41-yard line. And there's a brief timeout on the field with a score of Hamilton 1, Winnipeg nothing. Knock it off with sparkling, thirst-quenching 7-Up. Works every time. The gain is uh, very close to 7 yards. It'll be second down and 3 to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The drive in that center as Kenny Plain gives to Perkins. Perkins breaks for within a yard of a first down there as he drove that first tackler back. Good stop in there is Billy Waite, the little fella. He got a, got a shot at him early, and then he had to have help from Marty Martinello, who came back from the side. And there's only one way to move, uh, John Barrow, and you have to put two men on him. Watch, watch the Winnipeg team. Double team him up there to let, uh, let him go for that first down. On 
from the four, 30, actually 37 and a half yard line is where they have placed the ball now. It is first down. One nothing Hamilton, and we've got the 11-17 mark. In the first quarter with Kenny Plain getting out to uh, Ramey, but Ramey is boxed in completely for a loss of two and a half yards back on the 40 yard line. Garney Henley coming up from the defensive uh, secondary, along with help from Dave Beatty, number 70, on the left corner. Uh, Leo Lewis uh, for Winnipeg, the second highest scorer in their history, with a lifetime rushing average of almost seven yards, which is a great record. It is second down, 12 and a half yards to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Hamilton 40-yard line. And we have the plane going back to throw. Dumps that little screen in here to Perkins, but he's caught by Jim Reynolds, and Reynolds drops him for another big loss. Back to the 47-yard line. you know, plays that right corner, so he came all the way across to make it from that side. There go your deep men, Henley and Grant, to the 25-yard line. And Elmer kicking from the 50. Goes down to Tommy Grant, takes a hop and bounces off his knee. He has to play the ball because once he had touched it, that was a free ball, and he couldn't wait for anybody to give him protection. Carson was down there to make the stop, a 30-yard kick, and there was no run back. Whenever you want to put more sparkle into a gathering of friends, bring out the seven up. How about now? We'll probably see the hunting record broken because it'll probably come off a quick kick with the wind today. And here goes Zuger uh, giving to the inside the field, but that was closed off on him. Now, he was scrimmaging from the 18-yard line. He got to about the 19 before he was stopped by big Mario Mariani. Here's a look at uh, 63 Danichuk and 54 Kelly, the left blocking side of that Hamilton line. On the right side is Chuck Walton and Bronco Nagurski. Bobby Kuntz in there at uh, fullback. Grant comes out, and uh, they go to the right side roll here with Joe Zuger cutting back in. He's hit. Oh, Mariani caught him on the 28-yard line. Drove a touch shoulder right into his back. Uh, Zuger bounces up off of it, and he's got a first down. I think you'll see a lot of that rollout action today as they try to get away from each other's big defensive charge because you're seeing four great defensive ends today and they're going to try to minimize their effectiveness. There's uh, Norm Witten, 65, 61 Hamlin. Here we go to the inside and uh, Coons puts his head down for two and a half. He went to the 31. And Ed Ulmer comes up from the defensive secondary to make the stop. This is the thing uh, that Ulmer will do. You know, he's uh, he's a defensive halfback. The one thing he can come up, he can come up to that line of scrimmage in a big hurry, and he had to there because they wiped out the middle. Stepatelli breaks out over the ball. Chris on the right end is split off just about a yard. They go here to Bethia, and he's hit by Paul Ropes at number 43. That fine young uh, linebacker in that left corner. There's a flag on the play. And the signal I get there is holding, and it looks against Hamilton. I imagine they'll refuse that one because it'll be third down coming up. Ray Boucher is the referee. Pass uh, Bidrick, Seymour Wilson, the umpire, Taylor Patterson, Jim Piper, and Harry Ross completing the officiating team today. And here's that first punch with the win. They turned down that holding penalty. Goes Dick Wozniak, number 30, and 23, Billy Cooper. They go back to the 22-yard line. Joe Zuger is taken from his own 20. So they're giving him at least 70 yards for this punt. He didn't get a good one away, though. It's end over end, and Elmer takes it on the 30-yard line. End of the 35, the 40, and he is driven back by Bobby Coots and Johnny Simba. There's a brief time out of the field with the score. Hamilton won. Winnipeg, nothing. One bottle does it. Eliminates the biggest thirst right away. And the good thing about it, 7-Up tastes great. 7-Up, where there's action. Well, the first Stampeder fan telegram coming in about the weather out there. And uh, Ken Newman, I didn't hear it, but obviously he said something about the weather. And he was obviously joking, but somebody is taking it seriously. 
Here we go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on their own 39-yard line. And they counter in here with Ramey, but Ramey lost his balance. He was to follow the blocking of Sherwin Thorson, number 55. But Dave Beatty, the left end, number 70, came in to make the stop. Dave Beatty has been with Hamilton four years. This is his fourth Grey Cup. You know, there have been 37 Grey Cups. Winnipeg has been in the Grey Cup 19 times. Hamilton, 18 times. Second down and six yards to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they give to Leo Lewis. Lewis is hit by Marty Martinello. Number 65, Marty Martinello holds him on a third down and four yard situation. So this uh, great veteran really set it up for him. I think, uh, I think the Bombers were supposed to go a little bit wider on that one, Johnny, because uh, the action, you see Perkins here, the pullback goes out, drives his man in, and drove him right into the hole. Almer from his own 30-yard line, Henley and Grant to their own 41 for this kick. Here is Henley coming in. He lets the ball hop. It'll go into, no, Gino Kars grabs it as it went out on the 52-yard line. Cosentino is up and has been warming up for the bench, and he's fighting to come in now so that Ralph Fazio must be figuring to put that ball up into the air. That kick traveled eight yards after it had been, uh, went, well, to the point it went out. And that now gives the Hamilton the ball on the Winnipeg 52. It's a one nothing ball game, six and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Grant sent out to the right along with Dick Cohey, and we've got Taylor going in there and grabbing Frank Cosentino. The flag, the outside flag comes down. Ray Boucher now indicating the offside against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Now, Al Miller, the deep, the middle linebacker, started to move that line and stop. Now, maybe this caused Taylor to start to go in early. I don't know, but he certainly did not stop, even though he knew he was offside. He figured he might as well make a job of it. Bud Grant has been uh, handling this club for nine years, and he's still got six players that were with him back in 57 when he first took over. There goes the uh, first and five situation for Hamilton. Dick Cohey cut from the side by number 61, Roger Hamlin, and number 54, Phil Minnick. One nothing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats with five minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Whitman and Taylor, Hamlin and Mariani. Now they go into a six-man defensive line on this second down and three-yard situation on the 45. They give to Bobby Coos, and Coos does not make it. Mario Mariani, the defensive left end, was in there to drive him sideways. It took away his uh, forward momentum, and now the third down and one to go. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them gambling here because they have the win, but Frank Cosentino calls for the yardstick. And you know, it's 30 years ago this year the Winnipeg won the first Grey Cup for Western Canada. It was against Hamilton, and it was over in Hamilton. Yard yard short, so it'll be third down and one to go. And Ralph Fazio, who is normally a conservative type, I think has looked at the odds and feels you can gamble here in a conservative style. 5-13 remaining in the opening quarter. The wind moving. And they haven't set it wide, but uh, they dive them into the line on a quarterback sneak with Cosentino, and they're going to have to have a measure on this one because Phil Minnick was in there to get him uh, shoulder to shoulder with him. And uh, whether his forward momentum was enough to give him the first down, he didn't have it when he wound up in the ground, but that's not where they measure it. That'll from. be the determining factor where they decide Cosentino's forward momentum stop because uh, it stopped and he started going backwards when he got belted. You know, in the last uh, 16 years, the favorite team has not won 50%. They did make a first down. The favorite team in the last 16 years out of the time in the Grey Cup. Temperature is now 36 degrees in Toronto. 
And here we go, first down with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Basia peels out in motion right. Bobby Coote stays in the block for Cosentino, who's back to throw, and it is no good. Van Corson slipped and fell as he tried to put the brakes on to reach back. He was covered by Barry Hansen and Ed Omer. And there's a brief timeout on the field with the score. Hamilton one, Winnipeg nothing. Seven up. Cold, sparkling, fresh, brisk, bright, zesty, tasty, awfully, awfully good. Second down and ten to go. Frank Cosentino, and uh, normally he's not a quarterback sneak type of guy, but they called him on that one. And here we are, second and ten, at ten on the 42 and a half yard line. He's rolling, get that little toss here to Coe. He's got room to go. Only one man can get him, and that is uh, Henry Jansen. And Jansen drives him out on the nine and a half yard line. Dick Cohe. Good call here by Frank Cosentino. You'll see Dick Cohe, the only man back there and the other Tommy Grant <laughs> Tommy Grant uh, as a flanker Constantino rolls out and you can see Kohe in position moving up picks up that lateral they box the people out and he takes it for that big first down to the Winnipeg nine and a half nine first down nine and a half yards to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats who lead one to nothing with four minutes to play in the opening quarter and they almost went offside. Cosentino takes a long count, gives to Bethea trying to turn that right corner. He had been grabbed by Dick Thornton. He shook him and picked up another three yards of the play. And once again, it was Mario Mariani. Oh, fine, they picked up in that boy. I asked Butters, and how do you, how did you lure him away from the Washington Redskins? He said, well, they just happened to have four veteran defensive tackles there, and he Cohen. And three straight playoff games now has scored three big touchdowns. He broke away from Phil Minnick and then ran away from Henry Jansen. And on this one, Johnny, he really just ran away. They seem to have him in behind the line of scrimmage. But this versatile player, a guy who's played a little bit of everything since he came up here, really turned on the speed to rip around that end for the touchdown. It is now seven to nothing. Don Southern trying to make it eight to nothing. And he does. And at the 12 minute mark of the first quarter, he scored his Hamilton eight, Winnipeg nothing. There's the situation then, eight to nothing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. With the wind in the opening quarter of the 37th Great Cup battle, there's Don Southern, who has piled up over so many points for that Hamilton club over the years. And there's the defense, Leo Lewis, acting with Ramey and Thornton. And here is the kickoff. This goes back. Taken by Lewis. He fumbles the ball. Picks it up with one hand and goes to the goal line. Now trying to find a little room. Gets away from Jerry McDougal. Puts his head down and drives. There's a flag on the play. As Bill Danichuk came across to drive him down. A clipping penalty is the call. 77-yard kick and a 25-yard return. Clipping penalty against Winnipeg. That'll take the ball back half the distance and it'll go to the five-yard line. That's the kickoff. Had it been straight, that would have been uh, right to the goalpost. He wouldn't have got the three points out of it, but you don't often see them that long. Up to the five-yard line, where it'll be first and ten Winnipeg, with two minutes and 44 seconds now shown officially remaining in this opening quarter of this great cup battle. And they go flankers left, and they fake with Plain. Caught back in here, and he is driven down for a loss on the three-yard line. Well, they pulled the back all in motion left. He tried to bootleg it, but Zeno Cart, the top Canadian ball player this year, indicated again why he is the top man. And good defensive calling by John Barrow in there. They know that uh, Winnipeg aren't going to try anything fancy, and they were in there tight, and they were in there tough. 
and nobody was going to move against that. Hey, Angelo Mosca, number 68, says from league game to playoff game to Grey Cup, his mind is one way in the football field. He doesn't change for any of them. It is second down and 13 on the two and a half inside to Perkins. Perkins breaks over the five into the seven, and he still keeps fighting. Now Barrow and uh, Ramey uh, try to shove each other a little extra. Vitti from that left uh, end came driving in underneath to break it up. Coming into the ball game will be Ernie Pitts. Now, this will be because it's a third down and five situation. They rule them that the, well, this is back to about where they started from on the 10 yard line. It'll be third down and five to go. Ernie Pitts comes into the ball game. Leo Lewis comes out and the deep men go back. It's Henley and Grant. They're between the Winnipeg 30 and 35 yard line. Kenny Plain is in there and uh, he's gonna give him two points. Kenny Plain goes back, give him two points and a safety touch. A minute 24 to go in the opening quarter. And that makes it a 10 to nothing ball game and this will give Winnipeg because this is almost like saving yourself six points in that spot, Stoop. I'd have to go along with that, Johnny, with the uh, field position there. There, Hamilton, we're going to be in there for around the 35-yard line. And with the way John Southern can kick, it's going to be three or seven. Do you give away two? Keep that ball. They'll be able to run that clock out and finally probably have the win with that kick. Well, they're now first down Winnipeg on the 25-yard line. Cooper set out to the right. Lewis goes in motion. They get to Lewis behind the blocking of Gray. Jim Reynolds gets in there to drive him down. They'll be a game of about one yard on the play. Along with Marty Martinello. <laughs> on the 26-yard line, Second down and nine. You know, Jim Reynolds really made a great play on that. He came in. He didn't even look at the ball carrier. He just came in to strip the blocking, and he did it. Nielsen, the left hand, is split off. Here comes Lewis in motion to the right. Kenny playing, going back to throw. Looking for that short side. Dumps a little screen over there to Perkins. And John Barrow was over there to bring him down on the 29-yard line. He may have touched the 30. But they're trying to get those little screens in there to get to blow those big corners away. And a little bit of mistiming on that one. I don't think uh, Kenny Plain took enough time in those huddles. He didn't drag that huddle out. He's still got 25 seconds to go, and he's going to have to kick against the wind. <laughs> well, they gave up two points and picked up five yards on the exchange, and now the Winnipeg receivers, or the Winnipeg kicker, will have to meet those receivers about the 50. That is the Winnipeg 50. Ed Elmer back to his own 15-yard line, and he gets it uh, held up there with the wind. Grant takes it right on the 50 and is driven out on the 48-yard line by Rigney. And here in the first quarter, we've played a little better than 14 minutes. When you've got a thirst for something cold, sparkling, and very tasty, 7-Up. And nothing. Hamilton over Winnipeg. On the 48-yard line, the Hamilton Tiger Cats with Zuger going back to throw, and he's going for the bomb down here to Hal Patterson. It's over his head. And Frank Rigney, at least uh, Ernie Pitts, went all the way down there with him. Rigney made a great play at that uh, line of scrimmage, but uh, they couldn't hold him up long enough, and they couldn't catch up to Mr. Patterson. Well, that ends the first quarter, and while the teams are changing ends, let's pause for 60 seconds. And the nothing, and we'll find out what the Tiger Cats will be able to uh, do defensively as Winnipeg gets the ball. Bobby Coos going out of the ball game. And we're getting ready for a change down there as Mel Anthony is dressed. There's a look at John Barrow on our creepy peepy camera. Anthony comes in defensively as Bobby Coots went out, and we'll have to find out what that change is about because it's just a little bit unusual at this stage. They had said Bobby Coots uh, would be siding in place of Anthony, but Anthony is in there to go now, and they come here to Willie Bathia. Bathia is into the 45 and is dropped 
on the 45-yard line. Paul Robson from that left side. Do you think they're trying to pick on that kid in that left corner? You know, uh, that Hamilton Club is a fairly experienced football club. They get messages from Joe Rustig, who's up in the spotter's booth. He's sending word down to where they hope to spot a Winnipeg weakness, and they're going to have to try and work on a rookie. Now, Joe Zuger, who averaged 44 and a half yards this season, is kicking from his own 52-yard line. The receiver is Wozney, and Cooper back on the 15. He takes it on the 20 and is dumped. And there was Johnny Simba, number 19 and 48. John Metzger's down there to pull him down. They'll give him the 24-yard line on that one. They almost to 25. Winnipeg had... Uh, one first down, Hamilton four in the opening quarter. Winnipeg has 16 yards rushing, Hamilton 67. Each team attempted two passes, and Winnipeg completed two for a loss of three yards. Only Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's right in the center, gray at right guard, and Thorson at left. Here goes uh, Lewis, set out to the right. Perkins sets up the block, his flame throws out on the left side to Ramey. Ramey cuts back inside Cohey, and then is uh, driven out by Garney Henley on the 42-yard line. 17 yards, and Herb Patera comes across with Henley to do it. And well, let's take a look at uh, Ramey's moves on this one. He comes out at, uh, as a, on the wing back, makes a good move, pulls away, catches that pass, then runs inside of Jim Reynolds, and only good pursuit stops him from going a lot farther. On the 42-yard line, it is first down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on his 17-yard pickup. They take there to Perkins, give to Lewis. Lewis cuts inside, almost had the ball knocked out of his hands as Mosca drove him from the side, and then Herb Patera came up to make the stop. And there's a brief timeout on the field with the score, Hamilton 10, Winnipeg nothing. There's always plenty of action in a bottle of 7-Up. It's crystal clear sparkle lasts and lasts and lasts. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, second down and eight to go on their own 44-yard line. And here goes Slane back to throw, looking here this time to the right side of that Winnipeg, of the uh, Hamilton defense to Nielsen, number 28. And by the way, for those fans who are wondering why his number changed, uh, Bud Grant told us that his regular number 21 had been stolen after the game in Calgary. And he catches him just as well playing with number 28. And he playing takes a look at it, feeling that it was a first down, and it is. Well, they're on the, the ball will be centered just between the 51 and the 52-yard line. As you look at the Hamilton defense, there's uh, somebody that you're going to see a lot of is at number 23, Herb Patera, 240-pound linebacker, 24 years of age. Goes sideline to sideline, one all day, and hit people. So Ralph Fazio is justifiably proud of acquiring Patera. 10 0, Hamilton over Winnipeg in this Grey Cup battle. And we have Bunston and Nielsen getting mixed up now. Nielsen has to go to the opposite side, and Plain has to wait for him. Now, we fake to Lewis, come back to the opposite side to Ramey, trying to get out of there, but he's caught by Billy Waite, and then he's driven out. Billy Ray Lachlan. Now, it was Lachlan who Bud Grant thought he was going to get in the trade uh, for Nielsen. They gave up Floyd Webb instead. It turns out to be a pretty handy combination as far as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are concerned because Nielsen, well, you saw what he did with that back-breaking play to the Calgary Stampeders for 109 yards. Wide flank is to the right. Lewis is in motion deep, and here goes Plain looking for the middle. Steps into the pocket. Throws, and it is good in there to Ramey. Ramey, on a great move, is driven down on the 40-yard line and actually cuts down on about the 38. We have an injured Hamilton Tiger Cat player. It is uh, Ted Page who got a, a bump in that right thigh of his. A 21-yard gain to Ramey. And on this one, the Winnipeg defense, or the Hamilton defense, had a little problem because... Number 71, Farrell Funston came down there, made a great fake. He pulled the defense over there with him, and uh, 
hits on Ramey and hit Ramey with a... Uh, Ramey looks as if he was a little bit surprised to catch that one because uh, Flint threw it right past the first defender. Ted Page goes out of the ball game. This little fella, uh, three years with Montreal before joining Hamilton as part of that uh, big trade for Bernie Filoni. So Ralph Fazio is uh, having to do a little juggling now. You can see Kenny Flynn getting that little extra protection and just throwing it right through and a great move by Ramey on that one after he caught it. This is where this kid really gives you trouble. Billy Cooper, they haven't gone to him yet with the wind and all his speed you figure is coming any time. Ramey is a slot back. They throw to Ray Perkins, hit by John Barrow and then driven down by Billy Ray Lachlan. John uh, Barrow had him, and uh, he wasn't going to go any farther. And as he was held there, along came Billy Ray Lachlan. And boy, when they came up, they were hitting for keeps on this one. You can see that eye formation. Perkins moves over. They throw the lateral. He gets hit once, and whoo, did you see that Lachlan come in there? And a hurt, hurt head on that one. Almost wound up with Lachlan's job. Oh. <laughs> Second down and 11 yards to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on their own 39. They take the draw and they give to Lewis trying to get him outside. Rigney sets a block on Lachlan to turn Lewis into the middle to the 25. Down to the 20 is cut from behind by Dave Beatty. Oh, a great play by this veteran Leo Lewis, a 10-year man to give him a first down. 19 yards by Leo Lewis. And a great fake here all the way by the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I tell you, they uh, they were in trouble there a couple of times. You see Kenny Plain fake the draw to Art Perkins on this one. He gets tackled, and then look at that. Watch the blocking, and watch this running where he breaks tackles. And they come out of there now with Dave Ramey being driven down by Don Southern on the... 16-yard line, so his gain is four. It is second down and six. And there's a brief timeout on the field with a score Hamilton 10, Winnipeg nothing. If you're not drinking 7-Up right at the moment, maybe you're not enjoying the game as much as you might. Open a bottle now. It's pure enjoyment. Nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half of the game. Hamilton leads Winnipeg 10 to nothing. Lewis got a great play for Winnipeg, and they fake to Lewis this time. Plain is rolling out. He's trying to go to the end zone. High could be picked off. It is. Taken there by Garney Henley. His blockers form up in front of him, and he's having little room to go as he turns back in now to the four-yard line, and he is driven down on the four-yard line. Garney Henley goes in to pick off the first of the ball game, and that's his sixth of the year. And on this one, uh, Garney was trying to make up his mind whether to stay in there, bring the ball out to the 10-yard line, and then he saw the blocking starting to form. He said, well, maybe I can get a little bit more, but that Winnipeg uh, defense is pretty alert, too. They get over there and stop them, hold them on the floor. First down on the four-yard line with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And they're ahead 10 nothing. They give to Bitsy trying to pick his way inside. He had in there with a great burst of speed as he picked up five be second down and five to go. Maybe a little shade less than that. There to get him was Ed Almer. 25-year-old halfback and uh, leading punter with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who says, among other things, he has a couple of things to prove to Ottawa. Ball players sometimes regret the trade. Some often wind up liking where they're going but resenting the thing that caused the trade. Elmer is one who seems to have remembered it. Here we go, second down and four and a half yards to go for the Tiger Cats. Quick toss on the left side to Bethia. That's the cut back in behind Kelly. And uh, Mel Anthony, the blocker. And he has been about a yard away from the first down. Let's find out from Ken Newens down there to see if we've got a report from that Hamilton bench. Thank you, Thank you John. Ted Page sitting on the bench right now. He has an injured left knee. And uh, he stood up just a few moments ago to test it, 
seemed to be in pain and sat down again. However, uh, the trainer has not taken the shoe off or hasn't undressed the leg at, at the moment. It's a left knee. Now back to Johnny. Thank you, Ken. And now we're on the uh, 13-yard line. By the way, Ken, see if you can get something on uh, Bobby Kuntz for me, will you? Third down, a yard to go on the 13-yard line. Zuger into the wind. Try to hit it low and drive it to the sideline, and he does. The ball doesn't go out, however. And it is picked up and uh, driven out of there, and a flying tackle hitting Wozni was Bob Krause, number 14, Bob Krause. One of the few throwbacks of the old era of those flying tackles. Seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Hamilton 10, Winnipeg nothing. On the 41-yard line, and Cohey's touchdown, plus the convert, plus the single on the kickoff, and the opening kickoff, plus the safety touch. Accounts for Hamilton points. Plain rolling back. He's trying to get Nielsen loose. He can't. He just ducks his head down. He saw a wave of Hamilton players coming in, led by Marty Martinello. And the great veteran that he is figured out the law's averages quickly and ate the football. Let's uh, move the ball back now to the... 49-yard line. On this one, Kenny Plain was definitely looking for Nielsen on that play, and Nielsen, being a rookie, he was picked up by Cars for a little while, and then uh, Don Southern turned him over, and uh, Kenny was dropped. So we have it on the 49-yard line now for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Second down and 19 to go. Plain trying to get these yards back now as he steps into that pocket, so it could be picked. Oh, Patera almost had it. There's a flag on the play. Another flag on the play. There was one for probable interference down on the 37-yard line because an elbow was thrown in the midst of it all. Now, whether that deep flag was for another call, we'll have to wait and see. Then there was a flag thrown farther downfield. Uh, I see Ray Boucher. Yes, illegal interference against the, uh, against the Hamilton Tiger Cats and a roughing penalty. Well, we've heard uh, so long all week about these two rough, tough defensive lines, the big bruisers, and uh, you had to expect it to come a little bit. A rough play, Kyle added on to it, and this brings about a change. Cornell Piper comes out of the Winnipeg uh, defensive, or at least offensive line, and uh, going in there to replace him is Big Monty Kiffin. Big Monty Kiffin, a 260-pound tackle. Now, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are now on the 23-yard line with six and a half minutes remaining in the first half of play. And it is playing, getting here to Lewis, trying to turn that corner. Has to go out a little wider than he thought, but he could go to the 10, to the 8, and he's dropped on the 8-yard line. And there's a brief timeout of the field with a score, Hamilton 10, Winnipeg nothing. Maybe the nicest thing about opening that first bottle of 7-Up is that you know you've still got five more to go. Six minutes and four seconds now remaining in the first half. It's 10 nothing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. These clubs have had a lot of battles against each other. Let's see. On this one, a good fake by uh, Plain. He sent, he sent Ramey and uh, Leo Lewis in the other direction, and uh, Perkins, that big guy, that 225 pounder, just tore right past that Hamilton defense there. Perkins scored five of them running, five of them passing this year for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And uh, Norm went and missed on that one. That ball came out of there. Uh, it was held by Brian Palmer, and he had a tough time setting that ball down right, Stu. Didn't that happen? It seemed to get away from him, Johnny. Instead of putting it uh, on its point, he kind of had it flat. Wouldn't have to change, uh, change his uh, cadence and routine on that one. He just kind of hoped it and hoped. Of course, Palmer's been on that bench. That's the first thing he's had to do today, and you suddenly go out there and have to hold on to that football on the cold day. Maybe he had trouble closing his fingers on it. Now it is a 10-6 to ball game. Hamilton over Winnipeg. The ball is on the 45-yard line. And as they get set for the kickoff, Cohey goes back along with Jerry McDougall. 
McDougal, the all-time scoring champ for the Hamilton Tiger. Cashman, Cohe fumbles the ball. And down there, Ernie Pitts, and Pitts almost drove that ball out of his hand. Willie Bathia had trouble holding on to that one. And was very fortunate to pull it back in. 50-yard kick, a loss of one on the return. On the 15-yard line with five and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. Capitelli is better and Zuger is the quarterback. Zuger and Cosmina have both worked today. They have the flag on the play. They give to Batia. Batia finds no room to go once he got to that 12-yard line because big Norm Winton was over there along with Ernie Pitts, number 77. There's a rough play call. I'm sorry, there's an offside. <laughs> on this one take a look at al al miller here uh, he gets uh, he gets a lot of action he gets blocked and then still winds up on the tackle you can see sepatelli do a job and there he is in on the bottom of the pile great effort by second effort by miller well the ball is on the uh, just over the 18 yard line second down and very close to seven they give to jerry mcdougall who's now in there cutting back in finding no room to go he has dropped on the 20 yard line it'll be third and five and that was ernie pitts again now pitts is one of the nine players winnipeg has in their new defensive alignment this year and ernie has been with the blue bombers for nine years third highest scorer in the winnipeg uh, history and he's having himself quite a first half here tackling from that deep uh, half spot deep man waiting on the 40 and the 45 and the 50 they got three in the back there with Elmer the wide man and here's that kick by Zuger it lands on the 42 yard line and is driven out by Wozni hit there by Johnny Simba so they'll have a they'll scrimmage at about the 43 you know, you kind of often wonder, what happens to a center after he snaps that ball to the kicker? Let's take a look at Johnny Metris here and take a look. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> You know, a guy could get trampled to death out there. 27-yard <laughs> kick and three-yard return, and we now have a first down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Hamilton 43. There's four minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Cooper comes out to the left. Ramey is... Now set out on the slot back on the left side. They give to Lewis, who's going to be passing off it. He throws out here to uh, Perkins, and Perkins is stopped on the 30. And that is a first down as he picked up 13 yards. Over there was Billy Waite to make the stop. Now we had a little talk with Perkins and uh, Leo Lewis, and Perkins says, I'm going to make that, uh, that veteran a pretty good catcher before he retires. I wonder if he's going to claim that he's made him a pretty good passer out of him. <laughs> You know, so much of the prediction uh, this week related to the superiority in experience of Kenny Plain to go to the bench at the right time. And he comes up with a lot of them. Here goes Lewis in motion to the right. Plain is going back to throw. And he's going to be hit, but he gets the ball away now to Nielsen. Nielsen had almost gone out down there at the 10-yard line, kept himself in, and Plain is very fortunate to get that ball away. He was along. What made it tough was uh, Billy Waite, number 39 there. He had his eye on Nielsen all the way, and he stayed in position, and he almost forced Nielsen to go off the field uh, to try and get past them. Uh, Plain just didn't have enough time. Place that ball, line of scrimmage, just between the 30 and the 29-yard line. There's Kenny Plain and that uh, great unit of his, which is probably as versatile offensively well, I'll say more versatile offensively than any other club in Canada at this stage. That's three minutes. Now it's 10 to 6 score for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Kenny Plain going back to throw. And he gets a duck punt. Gets up. Oh, and he's hit hard in there by Jim Reynolds and John Barrow. As he looked like he was going to beat that charge the first time. Kenny Plain. Pulls up his socks and says, let's get back at it as he was pulled underneath there by Dave Vitti. Flag was down. Now there's a, a holding call. 
But have to wait for an official on this. Looks like it was Winnipeg. Yes, it is. It has been refused, which will make them do it all over again out in the 29 and at the 12 minute mark of the second quarter. The score is Hamilton 10, Winnipeg 6. Norm Winton, who has been good on 18 out of 25 field goals, early converts, is going to try to make it as good an average on this uh, field goal attempt, trying to pull that gap to within one point. On the 38-yard line, he's got an up, but he needs a little help. Hits the crossbar, and it is recovered down there by Garney Henley. Well, now the Blue Bombers know how those Saskatchewan Rough Riders felt when their last pass hit the goalpost. And by the way, on that play, you don't have to give yards when that ball hits the crossbar. You know, that, uh, that, thing, that crossbar is round. It gives you an idea how squarely hit it for the ball to come bouncing straight back. Whitten's accuracy, uh, with or without the wind, uh, is considered to be up to about the 35-yard line. He's not noted as a long ball kicker. First down for those Hamilton Tiger Cats on the 7-yard line. Joe Zuger with two and a half minutes to go. Gives here to Mel Anthony. Anthony is stopped on the nine-yard line, picking up two. And that was Dale Miller who came across to get him. The Hamilton Tiger Cats had certainly expected to invite Al Miller back to their camp had Winnipeg not picked it. Well, now we have uh, played right here in this second quarter, 13 minutes and 19 seconds. There's really only one good way to serve seven up. Often... Second down and eight to go for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on their own nine-yard line. They pull but the in motion with the Zuger going the opposite way. And he's caught by Phil Minnick. And he's dropped for a loss back on the six-yard line. Might have even touched him down on the five. Joe Zuger. Zuger's playing in his fourth great cup. Third and 11, and now with a minute 56 to go, the deep men will come back to the 30, 35, and 40. And they won't... Uh... Winnipeg are putting an extra man back there. They drop all their back and really spread across the field in case Joe Zuger is trying to pick a hole. He gets a good punt up there into that wind. It drops on the 26. It rolls into that crowd. Zuger goes in to cut the ball. The flag goes down. But that was the punter, and that flag has to come down automatically. Because the Zucker, of course, is on side, and Zucker headed for that ball like a bullet. The thing is, uh, whether he will call that uh, no yard penalty on the kicker or on some of the linemen that were up there, because on it. Yeah, the no yards was not on Zuger. It was on the other man who was there closer to him. So that'll put the ball down on the 22-yard uh, line. Of course, it'll be one of big ball. And we now have a minute and 31 seconds left to go in the half. Winnipeg are down 10 to 6, trying to get some points out of having the ball for this minute and a half. And, uh, of course, it's, it's just that kind of a ball game. We thought we expected to be this close at the end of the game. Here we come, with Nielsen to the right, Cooper out to the left, Ramey to slot back left, Perkins goes in motion, they counter here with Ramey, cutting back to 20, 25, 10, and out of the five, and he's into the five-yard line. Oh, he came back, others gave it to him, he went in motion, and finally Henley stopped him on the five-yard line. And a great tackle by Henley, because Henley tried to uh, knock him off balance. Ramey, with that tremendous balance of his, wouldn't go down, and then Henley reached the cross, and grabbed him by an ankle. He was gone if he hadn't grabbed, made that second grab. Winnipeg was all ready to go at that line of scrimmage, but the referee had allowed the time. Leo Lewis makes it 12 to 10 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And you know, uh, he picks that old veteran and he picks those holes. Some good blocking there. He didn't have much of a hole that Hamilton defense was moving up in tight. 
He had that goal line defense in there, that big mob that stopped anything from going down the middle. And Kenny Plain, that experienced quarterback, went wide with Leo Lewis. trying to get a field goal to get back within a single point of the Tiger Cats. Now they're a field goal ahead with a minute four to go. So the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will be kicking off. And I think what's very important as we look at a ball game this close is the fact that Hamilton had the choice in the first half. You would expect Winnipeg to have the win to the fourth quarter. Well, now you wonder, wonder what's the strategy be. Do you want it? You've scored two touchdowns with the win. Are you going to try and keep up that momentum by taking that win again in the third quarter? The kickoff by Norm Witten. And going back for this, Cohey and McDougal. McDougal takes it on the goal line. Four blockers in front of him to the 15. And he's coming sidewise, and Ernie Pitt drives his shoulder into him and drops him on the 25-yard line. 66-yard kickoff and a 26-yard return. Fifty-four seconds on the clock. Leo Lewis he picked up 30 points for the Bombers this year. And we are first down for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on the 25-yard line. Joe Zuger giving to Bethia. And Bethia stopped on the 28-yard line. Over there to get him was Al Miller. I was the fifth top rusher in the Eastern Conference this year at an even average of five yards a carry. There, third, second down and seven to go after that three-yard pickup. And it doesn't look like those uh, white caps out there in Lake Ontario are going to disappear. And that's, we would keep looking out there hoping they'd settle down and we'd have a little less wind. But I don't think we're going to get that lucky. Grant is the set out to the right. They give to Jerry McDougal. McDougal goes into the 32 before he's driven down, but he's hit by Ernie Pitts. And Stuke, I have never seen Ernie Pitts. We haven't seen that much of him on defense, but I've never seen him hit like he's hitting today. Well, he's, he's going in there as if he's mad about something. Uh, you know, this is quite a move for a guy who's been a great offensive ball player. And then the coach comes to him and says, Ernie, we need that speed and size of yours on defense. How about it? He switches over, and he's proving that he's football player all the way. Flag is down, last play of the half. Joe Zuger goes on the straight-ahead sneak. Actually took a half step to his left and went into the 34-yard line as the gun sounds to end the half. 13 to 10, Winnipeg over Hamilton. downstairs now to Brad Keene and uh, to hear from him and his guests. Okay, John, thanks very much. This is Bill Whistler, uh, who early in the season rocked his knee, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, Bill specializes in defensive end work, is that correct? That's right, Dad. What do you think of the two defensive ends of the Farmers now? Uh, I think they're very good. I think I'm going to have trouble getting my job back next year. Uh, they're both playing real well, Brad. Of course, uh, you did play some uh, tackle as well in your career. I played a lot of defensive tackle, right? Uh, yeah, but I'll just have to wait until uh, training camp next year to find out if I've got a job or not. Well, let's uh, talk about your injury and what uh, came early in the season, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, August 25th, we played with a giant at home, and uh, I tore a, car tore a cartilage and a ligament in my knee, and uh, they operated, and the doctor said it was a success, so everything should be all right for next year. Let's talk about this ball game and this first half that went by, and for a, a time there, it looked as though the Bombers weren't going to make it. Now they knocked in two. Well, I think the team that, that wins this ball game will have to score against the win. Uh, against the win. Uh, both teams used, are using the win real well, and uh, nobody can see the ball, ball against the win. So okay. Thanks, thanks very much, Bill. Okay. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Bill Whistler. Now it's back up to John. Okay, Brad, Stuke and I will be back with you shortly to discuss the highlights of today's game. Thank you very much, Bill Walker, and uh, here we have Gordon Walker, the official Eastern Football Conference statistician. And, Gordy, what do those five figures mean? Well, Stuke, it means that the wind has dictated the statistics for that first half. It's been like two separate games. Hamilton had the wind in the first quarter, dominated play, 
Winnipeg had it in the second quarter and dominated play. As you can see from the statistical board, Hamilton has had only four first downs all in the first quarter, while Winnipeg had 11, and they got 10 of those in the second quarter when they had to win. In yards rushing, Hamilton has 89 yards, Winnipeg 83, a very slight edge for Hamilton. Passing, Winnipeg had all the better of it. Kenny Plain has completed six out of eight, at least one was Leo Lewis, but Winnipeg has six out of eight for 57 yards. The Tiger Cats, Joe Zuger, none for two. One pass intercepted, that was by Garney Henley. Fumbles, the only fumble it was lost by Hamilton, Winnipeg recovering. The penalties, Hamilton has a slight edge here, a five for 40 yards and three for 10 against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. In punting, it's been a bad day for punting. Most of them have been against the wind. Joe Zuger has a 29-yard average for five punts, while Winnipeg, Ed Ulmer, has four for 20. They were all in the first quarter against the wind. The only field goal attempted was by Winnipeg, and uh, Winton's attempt hit the crossbar. You can see the individual standouts at the bottom there, the four leading rushers of that uh, first half of football. Duke? Oh, thanks very much, Gordy. Uh, just about as close as that score would say. Uh, and the way you see, but uh, how do you work it out on those kicks when that ball comes starts coming back to these fellows? Well, Duke, I didn't want to say this. We guess once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll resume with more of our halftime activities after this message. Here's part of the huge crowd that's uh, celebrating here, and uh, I tell you, you could tell when those western trains started to arrive yesterday in Toronto. Tickets as scarce as ever. All week long, the conversation was a Paris of the two teams. Everybody conceded Winnipeg an advantage in offense. Everybody conceded Hamilton an advantage in defense. Would the advantage of one supersede the advantage of the other and thus provide you with the outcome of the game? Well, it's a long way from being told yet. The story is only 13 to 10, Winnipeg over Hamilton at halftime. I think what you're going to find to be a, a uh, crucial decision in this second half the decision is not what Winnipeg would do, I don't think. I think because they're going to take the ball in the fourth quarter. We're, we can only guess from here, of course. But I think the big question is, what will either team be able to do in the quarter where they have to face the wind? And it's been strange over the years when you get set up for a game where wind is expected to be a vital factor, and you find out that the teams are elected to stay on the ground and make valuable yardage against the wind. We're waiting to see whether or not that'll happen here today. A lot of all-stars in action here today as Winnipeg comes back out. Winnipeg has Herbie Gray, Frank Rigney, uh, Kenny Plain, Ramey, all on that Western offensive all-star team. And on defense, they have Thornton, Jansen, Al Miller, and uh, so they made it primarily an offense. Now in the Eastern Conference, you take a look on the Eastern offensive team, and uh, you'll find Stan Crisson, along with Bronco Nagurski, and Chuck Walton. But on defense, Hamilton has Garney Henley, Billy Waite, Don Southern, Zeno Kars, John Barrow, Angela Mosca, Billy Ray Laughlin. So it gives you some idea of comparison of these two teams. And there's Kenny Plain, 30 years of age, one of the real nice guys in sports. Came up from Iowa, and it's, uh, hey, I can remember the, the first game he played, which is nothing wrong with that, except that it suddenly makes you nine years older, and you wonder where those nine years disappeared. But uh, here's a guy who's been a real hero. Look at Bud Grant, who uh, has really turned out to be a publicity conscious general manager, and uh, to me was the outstanding part of the week. 
when we saw Bud in action, just couldn't seem to do enough for the pressers, just as Ralph Fazio did over there in Hamilton. Fine treatment. Uh, has uh, now given us the official word that the reason there was no yardage marked off on that earlier punt where there was a no yard was simply because into the wind today the whistle will be blown, that ball will be blown dead and uh, our players, defensive players do not have an opportunity to get out of that five yard zone. They're not going to be penalized today unless they have a chance to get out. But the wind is so strong still that it's being held by Dave Beatty for down southern and the deep men go to the end zone. Dave Rainey, number 27, 29, Lewis, 14, is Dick Thornton. So here we go with Hamilton and the ball in the wind. And they kick down to the end zone. They're going to let this one go through and make them kick 10 yards back. But if it doesn't, no, it did go up. <laughs> now, they can do that three times. And it'll go back 10 yards each time. The maximum situation that could take place. There's no, there's no, uh, they don't take the ball back 10 yards and play, but the maximum number of times it can happen is three. And then they would have to give up the ball at that point. So we may try and may see, uh, certainly on the third occasion, you see some place kicking on a convert. Otherwise, they're trying to drop the ball. Now, Thornton, and they'll still go back to the end zone, and I don't think they're going to go any deeper now, but here's a, here's a look at from our high end zone camera. The receivers at the goal line and this goes in again and out and Leo Lewis didn't have to even take a second look at that one he knew it was gone no penalty again and now Don Southern as I said on the third time has to put that ball in there this time or lose it on his own 45 I imagine the word will go out to uh, Don Southern this time uh don't put it through, just lay it up there, kind of uh, maybe flatten the ball out and uh, play position. Uh, forget about the distance because if this one goes through, it comes back to the 45. And I think it's been discussed many times, and I, many people have the idea that this can only happen twice, but it's the third time, and here we have it now with Dave Beatty holding. It looked like Lewis, uh, Ramey, and Thornton weren't going to go back as deep, but now they are back. And here's a short kickoff. He almost angled it to the side. Ramey feels the ball, takes it on one hop to the 10. And he's up to the 15, to the 20, into the 25, trying to get outside it. He's driven back to the 23-yard line by Billy Waite. Sixty-yard kickoff, an 18-yard return. That ball will be finished from the 23-yard line. It's Winnipeg 13, Hamilton 10, into the first minute of play. And there's Beatty and Mosca 68, 50, Lachlan 65, Martinello 23, Patera. As that defense gets ready, final hold is Winnipeg club. Hamilton has to get their hands in that football and do something with it in this quarter. And he plays, gives to Perkins. Perkins trying to break a tackle, but he's held around the ankle and dropped in the 27 by Marty Martinello. Marty Marinella, who is the, probably the best player the Argonauts had in their training camp. Watch John Barrow on this. He's got the action. He's got double blocking, and he's still in there at the bottom of the pile with his arms around Perkins' ankle. They just almost reached the 28-yard line, so it'll be a second-and-six situation for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Ramey outside the right end. Perkins now goes in most of the right, and they give to Lewis, trying to get him outside. He's got a big first as he goes to the 35, and finally is brought down by Mosca on the 39-yard line with Garney Henley underneath and Mosca on top. Leo Lewis. Only Jerry James has scored... More points than this boy, Leo Lewis, in uh, the history of the Bombers, and it goes back a long way. 
Bombers were in the first time, well, the Great Cup back in 1925. Hamilton was into the first time back in 1910. So these are some great old traditional teams. First down, Winnipeg on their own 39-yard line. Quick toss on the right side. And they're in there to hit Perkins and drop him back on the 36-yard line. With Zeno Karst. Zeno Karst has been in eight Grey Cups. He's, he shares that record with a number of players. Thirteen to go, and they give to Ramey, trying to get him outside. And he is driven down on the 43-yard line. Over they get him was Garney Henley. It'll be third down in about seven. And over the years, I don't know if uh, two teams who've had a uh, better reputation and a better record for making second-half comebacks. So when you've got two great second-half teams, should be a great second half. Ed Almer on his own 27. The receivers are on the handle of the 45 and 50. Grant and Henley. And it goes back over Grant's head. He takes it back on the 40. And then Norm Rawhaus takes it out on the 41-yard line. And there's a brief timeout on the field with a score of Winnipeg 10, Ham at least Winnipeg 13, and Hamilton 10. Buying a car without a test drive is like getting a mail-order bride. Test drive before you buy. Happiness is owning a new Ford. And this is the thing, this is the thing that they try and do. They try and get a back with pretty good speed on a slower corner linebacker. And watch to see you go in motion here. Number 54, pick him up. See see a wave. Hey, I'm open. He just barely got it, and then he runs away. Ernie Pitts comes over from the other side of the field too late. 69 yards for the touchdown to put Hamilton ahead, 16 to 13. That's the first completed pass of the ball game. Ernie Pitts is shaken up on the play. So Hamilton finally completes their first pass of the game, and they did it in grand style. Norm Rawhouse will come in to replace Ernie Pitts. Here's Gordy Mackey with him, and now Don Southern attempts to split the upright. The sporting champ of the Eastern Conference, a ball and one hop, and he still got it through. Ron Southern, who won the East with 82 points this year. 17 to 13 for the Tiger Cats. And, uh, you know, Stick, uh, taking time out there to set that ball up. It's, it's time to remind me, to remind you that we've had a great year bringing these football telecasts for the Ford people. Well, it's been a great time. There's a wonderful bunch to work with, John. There are a lot of firsts, including Ford, but uh, uh, Willie Bethea's first touchdown pass of the year. And here's that kickoff coming back now to Lewis. In the 10, 15, look at this guy go. He gets a break, 30, and is driven down. He'll touch him down to the 29-yard line as Johnny Simba. 73-yard kick and a 37-yard return. They'll place him between the 29 and the 30. Hamilton, 17. Winnipeg, 13. With four minutes gone in this third quarter. Hamilton in the Grey Cup for the fifth straight year, tying a record set by the only other team that, well, it did it, but had the only other team that has never won the Grey Cup, and that was Alvin Horace Ritchie's great old Regina team back in 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. Leo Lewis comes out, shaken up on that play. And Dick Thornton goes into the backfield. Versatile Dick Thornton. The last year of a three-year contract for him. Cooper sets out left. Nielsen tightens up on the left side. 
Ramey the right end, or a halfback outside the right end. Perkins driven down by Marty Martinello. Took another couple of steps, and then John Barrow came across to make sure he didn't go any farther. Art Perkins from North Texas State. See, the funny how you can replace not a fullback spot. One great North Texas State fullback, old Charlie Shepard, and then bring in another one named Art Perkins. By the way, Stuke, I uh, got word that old uh, Horace Ritchie over there in Regina is in pretty good fettle these days. Said to say hello to everybody. And all Indeed. football fans uh, wish him well. He's probably sitting there helping them coach, too. <laughs> it's second down and eight to go for the Bombers. They give to Ramey behind Herbie Gray. On that right corner, he's hit from the side and driven back by Billy White. Oh, that Hamilton club is gang tackling out there today. And they took that headlinesman with them. He got a little close. He didn't think that uh, that pursuit was as tough as it was. Dave Ramey. And Elmer back to his own 20. He's 15 yards back of that line of scrimmage. Wants to take a little extra time because he's kicking into that wind. And, oh, look at the wind. He's got a hook. And Elmer, Elmer almost took his own ball. It's taken by John Barrow. And he's going all the way for a touchdown, but it'll be called back to the 30 because that ball will have been whistled in. situation because of the wind factor. There's that Elmer on this kick. We've got him on the isolated camera. You see him uh, take that ball. Well, the sun came out for just a moment there, and back goes Joe Zuger to throw. He's being rushed. Throws a screen in here to Bethia. Bethia is trying to cut back inside. He fumbles the ball. Winnipeg has it. Bethia made a great catch on that. It almost got him away from He tried to tuck the ball in. He was hit, and then number 65 was in on that tackle, got in there to recover the ball. I'd like to point out again, and we've mentioned it many times, but for those who may not understand it, on a very windy day, the referee can blow that ball dead so that people cannot be trapped in a five-yard zone. It's unfair to the defense. It's unfair to the offense. Rather than take any unnecessary chances, they blow the ball dead. That explains the previous play. First down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers is Kenny playing. Gives here to Dick Porton. Porton slips and falls. Hit by Dave Beatty. Got up and went again and moved just over the 31-yard line. Hit by Don Southern, an Eastern All-Star. Ford of Canada has been the quarterback calling the signals on these football telecasts week after week, and as far as I'm concerned, it's been a real pleasure working on Ford's team. Well, I know I've enjoyed it, and I know the fans have, and I think Ford has too. Second down and eight to go for Winnipeg as they give to Dick Horton, and Horton puts his head down to the 35. He'll be four, three and a half, four yards short of a first down as Herb Patera made the stop. And there's a brief timeout on the field with the score Hamilton 17, Winnipeg 13. Powered by Ford says total performance. Try total performance. Less than a converted touchdown of Hart, and this is what Grant is playing for, trying to hold and figuring he can make that back in the fourth quarter with the win. Well, you figure if you can stay within uh, maybe 10 points coming out of this... Uh, third quarter going into that fourth they figure they, they should be able to pick up 10 points the way it has been going it's a bit of a gamble he leaves it up to the offense now and the way it is now I, i'm kenny plain is still going to have to throw against that win once in a while because that hamilton defense is in their awful tight they're not going to do too much running against it Ray and Thorson, the guys move in to get set, and here comes Kenny Plain. He's going to go with a big reverse to Cooper. And Cooper's caught back here. Caught for a big loss on the 12-yard line. And it was Jim Reynolds again, and Billy Cooper with his hands on the ball for the first time threw the ball into the ground in disgust. And uh, one of the times when you 
even an experienced quarterback will uh, will maybe forget about something because when you haven't got them spread out, when those backs aren't deep, when they're in there waiting for a running stuff, it's pretty hard to fool them with any kind of a reverse. They've still got to be afraid of that pass threat for a reverse, a deep reverse like that to work. On the 12-yard line, Winnipeg, second down and 23 yards to go. And uh, the gift of Perkins caught by Marty Martinello and then dropped in there by Herb Fatella. Back on the six-yard line. <laughs> this reminds me of the good old days, Duke, when they say, you grab him and I'll hold him and I'll hit him. <laughs> you, think they could, you think they could come with another safety here? Well, uh, if they gave it, if they gave up a safety touch from, uh, they were about the 28-yard line on the first one, now they're back on their own 8-yard line, I'm pretty sure the word has gone out, uh, give them two and let's try it again, let's try and eat that clock up a little quicker, though. That would make it 21-13. It would give them a converted touchdown on a single apart. And uh, Dick Thornton lines up on the right side. And here goes Plain, the safety touch. And the fans here don't like it. Of course, they are predominantly Hamilton fans. I wouldn't say... I'm, I'm speaking in numbers now, but that doesn't make them predominantly Hamilton fans in... Uh, vocal decibels. <laughs> but those Hamilton fans, even a few of them, will out decibel a lot more other people. But, uh, you know, you a fan will say, what the heck, we came to see a football game. Well, what about all this strategy uh, going? But it's still, when you're a coach, this is the right play. Except for the next eight months, you don't have to tell them how you won it or lost. It's just how you won it or lost. It's just that you won it or lost. <laughs> Norm Raha splits out wide to the left. Bumps in the tight end right, and here's Kenny Plain ducking his head down. Almost got away. And he got nine and a half yards in the play. And six minutes left to go in the third quarter of play. It's Hamilton 21, Winnipeg 13. Then a brilliant call by Kenny Plain there. He could see that blitz forming uh, down the middle, and that... They came in so fast that actually I think they kind of helped push him out of the way to get at the ball carrier who happened to be playing. Second down and one yard to go. And Norm Ramos has to switch ends in a hurry there. And they give here to Art Perkins. And Perkins has the first down as he reached the 36-yard line. There's a brief timeout on the field with the score, Hamilton 21, Winnipeg 13. Buying a car without a test drive is like buying a suit without trying it on. Test drive before you buy. Happiness is owning a new Ford. On the 36-yard line, first down, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It's 21-13 for the... Hamilton, Tiger Cats, and here goes Dave Ramey in motion to the left. Kenny Plain tries to sneak, and he's driving in there, pushes Marty Martinello back, and stops him on the 40. Interesting, you know, you check the records of uh, Ralph Fazio and Bud Grant. Both very uh, high, very well over the 500 uh, win and lose mark. And here goes Kenny Plain giving to Dave Ramey, and Ramey is caught back there by Angelo Mosk and John Barrow. And this big Art Perkins uh, ahead of Ramey in there has been held to 18 yards and 10 carries. The kind of a day where you expect the fullback to do most of the work. But then, of course, the defense also expects it and has been successful in holding. 21-13, Hamilton over Winnipeg. And this is going down to the wire. Four minutes remaining. And Ed Ulmer on his own 20-yard line. And he's going to hoop it this time. Going back out of bounds right at the Hamilton bench. Coming out at about the 53 yard line. In the meeting this year, 
Ralph Fazio saw his club with a 20-point uh, lead and lose the game 26-21, one of the great games of the year. But it's interesting to compare their teams as well as their records. You know, Winnipeg uh, has 23 players who are 33 years of age, or at least uh, are 25 or under. And here goes Zuger back to throw the long one. He steps into the hole, and he's got uh, Bobby Kuss with him, and Kuss fumbles the football. It is loose. It's recovered by uh, Winnipeg. Minnick. Henry Jansen coming up with it. Big break for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. A good play by Zuger. He's hit. He ducks and he starts running. Bobby Kuntz gets in a position. A good lateral and he unfortunately batted it down and in. Jansen had a great collision. And Winnipeg, the big break, they recover that ball. Well, uh, Hamilton has lost three fumbles. Winnipeg has not lost any. And Winnipeg now with three minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It is now on the 36-yard line. Kenny Plain sets in motion, gives to Ray Perkins inside. Ooh, he got a shoulder right into the chin from Angelo Mosca and dropped him on the 40. And at the 12-minute mark of the third quarter, the score is Hamilton 21, Winnipeg 13. We used to call... 13, Hamilton over Winnipeg. The ball is on the 40-yard line. And we have a player, Dick Thornton, is coming into the bench, and he did not get it in time. If he doesn't get out, there'll be a penalty out there. He just hustled out the field in time. Second down, and uh, seven yards to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on their own 40. They fake to Lewis. Here's playing on the right side, stopped by Zeno Cars. Back of the line of scrimmage. That'll make it third down and eight. Let's go down there now to uh, Brad Keen for a fast report. Yeah, Phil Lowe retired in the dressing room. He had a bruised hip when they made a quick repair job, John. I think they taped a pad on his hip, and he's back in the ballgame. But I think I don't think he'll be carrying too much from here on in. Ernie Fitz has a handspring problem, but they're all going to stay in. Uh, Almer back to his own 25-yard line in a third and eight situation. And here's the snap. And uh, waiting under this one is Garney Henley. And stepping in front of him there was Don Southern. Southern hit by Farrell Funston. Carries him for a couple of yards and is dropped on the 51. What a great football season. Uh, and it's wrapping up in great style. And what a great football sponsor we've had, too. That's the Ford of Canada team, Stoops. Well, it's been a pleasure working with them. You know, they've been, uh, they've been the quarterback uh, calling the signals for these telecasts week after week. And we go with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Two minutes and four seconds to go in the third quarter. Zuger is going back to throw, and he is caught back in there. And he's dropped the line. Oh, yeah, Roger Hamlin, Norm Whitten, Mariani, everybody. is like they were drawing straws, saying, he's mine, he's mine. Winnipeg and rushing has carried 37 times for 85 yards. Hamilton, 21 for 108. And good coverage by the Winnipeg uh, defense here you can on the play Tommy Grant and all the other ones were well covered Joe just didn't have time to pick anybody up now the Tiger Cats are second down and uh, 17 to go and here's Zucker going back to throw again down to the middle here to Bethe and he fumbled the ball had it and dropped it now no, that forces Hamilton into a what would normally be a gambling situation early with a minute and 18 seconds. But if they gambled and lost, they would uh, give Winnipeg the ball in good field position, so they have to put her downfield. Minute 12. They have three deep men back. Wozni, Cooper, and that replaced Lewis, and Omer. High snap over the head of Joe Zuger. He gets the ball away anyway. Good kick. Watch the bounce on this. And over the head of Cooper. Goes all the way back into the end zone. And he is stopped. The ball does not come loose. Could, could possibly be a safety, but it'll likely be a single. It'll probably be a single. The question will be whether he ever had control of the ball and he was just playing it. It wasn't his 
It wasn't his momentum that carried it over. It was actually the momentum of the kick that took that ball over the goal line, so it would be one point. Now, if he had carried it back, yeah. then it would have been two points. 68-yard punt. And we have 45 seconds remaining. Safety touch to safety touch in the single. Must see his touchdown has been the scoring situation. And here goes Leo Lewis, caught back there, and he's dropped. And there's a lot of little edit, extra effort. Billy Lawson says, look, I've got the football, Mr. Referee. And Mr. Referee says, you're late. 25 seconds left. Now if they, they'll obviously take as much time as they can on this because if they are forced to punt, they'll want to do it on the first play of the fourth quarter, which would be with the win. But the score is now 22 for Hamilton, 13 for Winnipeg. A uh, clock showing 20 seconds. The flag is up. <laughs> Taking a long time in that huddle. I mean, I don't suppose they'd mind if they were called too long in the huddle in this situation anyway. Here they go in motion. Kenny Plain turning that corner, gets away from one, and then is stopped on the six-yard line, or the 16-yard line. Now, the gun is not sounded. The flag is down, and the gun does sound. So they just made that in the nick of time. 22-13, Hamilton over Winnipeg. Now, that's the kick with the wind. And that ends the third quarter. While the teams are changing again, let's pause for 60 seconds. Temperature is 36 degrees, and will give you a little idea of what's uh, happening out there in those big weight caps coming up off the breakwater. So, uh, Ed McPherson out there in Vancouver, what's that you're saying about the sun and the warm temperature? Well, we have Winnipeg with 12 first downs, Hamilton 6. Winnipeg 76 yards rushing, Hamilton 108. Winnipeg has completed 6 out of 8 passes for 57 yards, Hamilton 2 out of 5 for 71. And now we have Winnipeg with Ed Oler making his first punt with the wind on his own three-yard line. Johnny Henley shades his eyes into the sun. And Omer gets a dandy. The record is 90 yards. This goes back to the Johnny Henley on the 16-yard line. Henley to the 25. Driven over here by Farrell Funston, who's got him by the seat of the pants and doesn't let go. He had stretch pants on, so he got an extra yard out of it. 79 yards was the length of that punt. <laughs> you can see Garney Henley shedding his eyes and going back. That ball didn't bounce, and now there he goes. And what's this? Twenty-eight-yard line, and it's Hamilton with Winnipeg moving offside. It was Roger Hamlin. Frank Cosentino holds on to the football. Now we have the desperate situation. Fourteen minutes and fourteen seconds left to play. Hamilton is leading Winnipeg twenty-two to thirteen. Winnipeg has beaten Hamilton in five out of their eight Grey Cup meetings. The last time they met was in the fog, and we're not afraid to say it now. It's too late to set the jinx in. That was back in 62, of course. And here we go. Second, uh, first down and five to go on the 33-yard line. Frank Cosentino, the quarterback. He sends Mathia in motion, and they count it the other side. They fumble. Winnipeg has picked up the football. Winnipeg Blue Bombers have recovered. Coots was not able to hold on to that football. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers take over in a very crucial spot because they are on the 33-yard line. Those Bombers really coming up. That's the fourth fumble they have recovered. And they're down at eight points, but... Uh, Good position right now. Billy Cooper wide to the left. They give here to Leo Lewis. Following his blocking, he has to make the last few yards on his own, however, as he goes for nine yards to the 24-yard line. The 
Lincoln locomotive. Stopped by Ghani Henley. Second down and one yard to go. Hamilton leading by nine points, 22 to 13. And they have second down and one to go. And Kenny Plain gives to Art Perkins, and he tripped over John Barrow's leg. Otherwise, he'd have had a good four or five extra. He moves into about the 22, nearly 22-yard line. Have to wait for the one pile there to get an official on it. And Perkins hurt his leg as he tripped over Barrow's leg and fell on that knee. Two hundred twenty-five pound fullback Art Perkins played six games last year, and uh, Art was—he said I was getting a little discouraged last year, thinking he'd only get the ball in second and one-yard situations. <laughs> and on this play, watch, watch Perkins take that ball. Watch him just see the way he just tripped over Barrow's heel, and. Uh, they're working on his leg right now. That was one of those collisions that... Uh... I'm Grant. A little happier when he sees that um, Perkins is coming off under his own steam and, and Thornton will go into that backfield. Now, we mentioned earlier about Leo Lewis throwing that pass. In his 10 years, every third pass he ever threw for Winnipeg went for a touchdown. First down on the 22-yard line for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers of Plain. Looking over here to that right side after taking to the left. He is now starting to run. And at the 15, down to the 10. is stopped in there by Billy Wade. Billy... He landed on the 10. That's a gain of 12. Kenny Plain seemed to have a little extra time on that. He was he was looking around at it and uh, watch him. He's got lots of time. Then he sees that big hole and watch this tackle by Billy Wayne. Wayne didn't even bother trying to dodge him. So it is first down on the just over the ten yard line. And here we go with Plain countering in here to Ramey trying to get inside and he's caught by Jim Reynolds, who grabbed him around the ankles. He was, that play was originally designed to go outside the end, but Ramey, the great uh, Michigan halfback, saw that it was not there, and he had to kind of add lib to the inside. He's on the seven. He's second down and seven to go, and we have uh, Norm Rawhouse coming in. Billy Cooper comes out. Play from the bench on a second and seven situation. No, Thornton goes in. Rawhouse goes in. Will he run as a flanker? Thornton. Nielsen is now the right flanker. Rawhouse becomes the left end. Here is Plain going back to throw. Looking into the end zone, and it is no good. Too high. And there's a brief timeout on the field with a score Hamilton 22, Winnipeg 13. Belong to the Meteor. And the Meteor. See Meteor. Yeah. Today. Well, I rather suspect that uh, Norm Witten comes in to try to close it because a field goal here would put them an unconverted touchdown apart. And. When you get back to this uh, late stage of this game, the club with the ball in the last play is probably going to win it, and they're trying to look for that situation where a point would mean that much. They're trying to get that insurance point. They need it anyways. they still got 10 minutes to go, and this would be a good place to take it. That's good. Hamilton goes ahead, 22 to 16 now. Six points separating. And we have ten and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Now 
Ariadne. On that left end. Anxious to get going. Cosentino, the quarterback. He's got Mel Anthony, a wide fullback flanker. And Cosentino keeps cutting back into the middle. And he stopped on the 40 as he picked up five. Frank Cosentino, number 11. Who, uh... In the shadow of uh, Bernie Filoni for five years. Now trying to battle it out with uh, Joe Zuger for that starting job. And you know, uh, it just shows you how the, how the defensive men will key on the halfbacks and forget about the quarterback. You see Miller go way over there, and when Constantino came back, somebody else had to recover in a hurry. Second down and five yards to go. Frank Constantino again sets his action wide. He counters to the middle here with Willie Bathia, and Bathia is two yards away from a first down, and he's dropped down on the 43. What a yard and a half, maybe, if they place that ball about the 43 under that pile somewhere. Dick Sohe, who had uh, four carries for 45 yards in the first quarter, has not had the ball since. And Joe Zucker will be kicking from the 29, and the deep men, Wozni and Cooper, from Brandon and Winnipeg, on the 37-yard line, and he stopped on the 42. 31-yard kick into the wind. We would like to thank on behalf of our sponsors, Ford of Canada, the many folks across the country who have taken the trouble to write in and say thank you for bringing these football telecasts to the Canadian football fans all year. We uh, at Ford and with Ford are very pleased that you appreciate it and look forward to doing more. Here's by Leo Lewis. And on this one, you know, the combination of blocking and mostly, I have to say, great running by Leo Lewis. This Hamilton defense smelled that one. Look at him just take the line now, watch him pick up his blockers, break tackles, keep on going and steal an extra nine yards on that play with just driving running. Nielsen out to the left, this Kenny Flayne takes that from center. Fumbles the ball, it comes loose, and Hamilton is recovered. John Barrow was in there, underneath the pile. Hamilton has lost only nine fumbles all year, but they lost four today, and they finally get one back. John Barrow was blitzing on that play, and the ball popped right to that spot. This guy in nine years has been an all-star nine times in five positions. Here goes Frank Cosentino in a first and ten situation. He gives here to Willie Bathia, and Bathia jumped off a of one to the 40, down to the 35, 30, 25, being chased, and he is finally pushed out by Al Miller. A great play by Al Miller, because he was gone. Watch him as he comes to the sideline now because there was nobody between he and the goal line. Watch your Willie Bathia on this behind. Good blocking. One missed tackle. They cut it in too tight. Another great move. And now watch Miller take off <laughs> gambling that he could push him out of bounds. And it worked. 38 yards was the length of the gain. And the, the old city comes to life. Ball is on the 16-yard line. Herbie Gray has gone into the corner to re replace Robson on that left side. And Cosentino sends Jerry McDougal in motion. He uh, fakes here to Anthony, keeps the ball, cutting back in. And he is dropped around the 14-yard line. And there's a brief timeout on the field with the score. Hamilton 22, Winnipeg 16. Meteor's dual action tailgate works like a tailgate and also swings open like a door. See you today on the exciting Meteor 66. Second down and about eight and a half yards to go. He didn't, he didn't get two on the play. Ball is just shy of the, between the 14 and the 15. The sun comes out again, but that hasn't chased any wind away. 
And here's Frank Cosentino calling that shot. He keeps, he can flip it if he wants, but he's caught from the side. Marianne and the ball is loose. It's loose again, and Winnipeg goes after the ball. It's recovered by Dick Thornton. And Thornton is dropped on the 32-yard line by Stan Cresson. Hamilton has lost their fifth of the afternoon. You know, I missed when uh, Frank Costantino seemed to have made up his mind that he was going to keep it. Now, you see that fake, and then it was knocked out of there. Jerry McDougall tried to get it, and then a great recovery by Dick Thornton, who came up from the other side of the field to get in on that play. Uh, Winnipeg is first down on the Winnipeg 33-yard line. Plain sends Lewis in motion right. Perkins goes back in the block for him. And he's being chased. He's going to run. Sees the side. Starts to go. And he gets away from Zeno Karst. Then Herb Patera keeps going to the 52-yard line. How about that? I'll tell you, that's that veteran quarterback. Boy, he's still got those legs. And Reynolds came over to make the stop. That's uh, Kenny Plain. Looked like he was stopped. And he took off... Uh, like my XL 500. Well, this is a great ending to a great football season, Johnny, and as I mentioned before, what a great sponsor. 52-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Five minutes and 44 seconds. Left to go in the ball game, and here is Leo Lewis trying to get to the outside. Caught over here on the 54-yard line. So his gain is four yards. And... Uh, it was Dick Cohey over there. And you see Herbie Gray, number 53, trying to stay ahead of him, giving it that extra effort. He got knocked down on his knees, and he was still trying to block. Herbie Gray playing his last game of professional football. <laughs> this is his 10th year, six times an all-star, and uh, a great defensive end for eight years, an offensive guard this year and an all-star. And uh, he's listed as a number two backup man in every one of the linebacking positions. Kenny Plain goes back to throw, chased by Marty Martinello, steps out to that right side. Now Davidi chases him. He puts his head down as he goes to the 50, tries to cut back in, but Vitti had enough of him to drive him out. There's a brief timeout on the field with a score, Hamilton 22, Winnipeg 16. What is your wish, master? I want a powerful car, a sporty car, a glamorous car. You want a big new generation comma. Will they go here? <laughs> Hamilton sends in uh, the big beast to bolster up that line. Now, Winnipeg, considering if they ever gave up the ball here in a punt, Hamilton could keep it to the end, so they can't afford to do that. They've got to hang on to the ball and keep going. They're third down and a yard to go. They're down in four feet. They're on the Hamilton 49-yard line. Kenny Plain sets Ramey to the right. Perkins is full back, and he's going back, looking for that pass down the middle to Farrell Funston. What a call. And Plain was shaken up on the play. Hit by Nagurski. What a call. You know, uh, that was a goal line defense in there. You've got about a 10-man line. They've taken the, they've taken the secondaries out to beef it up so that he can't get that short yardage. And I tell you, it takes a real experienced pro to a little bit of intestinal fortitude to stand back there and pick that man for that first down. A big play. First down on the 40-yard line. And here we go with Kenny playing Lewis back to Ramey on the reverse. And he's uh, hit by Karst and is driven out after a seven-yard gain. Three minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the ball game. Hamilton 22, Winnipeg 16. Now the last time these two teams met, they made a number of changes. And as I said, they're very close to each other in many categories. Winnipeg has 12 players left from that 62 team, and Hamilton has 13. Second down and seven to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Hamilton 33-yard line. Hamilton, known as a great defensive ball club, needs that great defense right now. Kenny Plain gives to Perkins, and Perkins is stopped, short of a first down. But this is not a bad thing for Winnipeg, because they keep pecking away and killing off time as they move 
to the goal line, but uh, getting close enough to kick is no good to them. On a third and one situation, they'll probably gamble as they did before, and they'll look to see whether Ralph Fazio will send in the big goal line stand out here on the 30-yard line, which cost them because Flames threw over them last time. Three minutes and eight seconds left to go. 22 to 16 for Hamilton. Traditional, typical, great football game between Hamilton and Winnipeg. The ball blew away. Marty Martinella put it back, cheated by a half a foot. They replaced it. Here we go, third down and one to go, and they get the Perkins this time. Now, I don't know if he made it or not. The Winnipeg, the Hamilton defensive team rushes out, and I don't think he made that first down. It didn't look like it, Johnny. He got hit pretty quick. I don't think he penetrated that line at all. Hamilton takes over the football. the 12 minute mark of the fourth quarter the score is Hamilton 22 Winnipeg 16 the ball is on the 30 yard line we have two minutes and 52 seconds now left to go it's 22 to 16 for Hamilton setting the stage for a dramatic finish and a great great cup game Joe Zuger is in at quarterback McDougal and Anthony go in as the fullback and he's taking a long time before he brings that ball out. Joe Zuger. That's Tommy Grant wide to the right. They go to the middle here with Bathia. And Bathia is hit head on in there by Norm Whitten. That gain is two and a half yards. Big spot here because if they can't move the six at least once, Winnipeg is going to to have a punt and to have a full sequence to go. And the ball is just over the 33-yard line, so it is second down and seven. And they have not thrown a pass to Grant. They've only thrown one to Patterson today, which is a strange game for Hamilton, but it's been dictated by the weather. Anthony comes out to the right, but Thea goes back inside, is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So Hamilton will stare at that... Uh, Winnipeg offense once more, and I'd like to remind everybody that we'll be going down to the dressing room, the winner's dressing room, uh, whichever it happens to be, and I can tell you, with our cameras ready to break to go, they can't go yet because they don't know where to go and won't know the last play. Well, this Two is going to be Winnipeg's last chance, I think. And here goes Joe Zuger. It's an end over end ball that's going to bounce out at the 47-yard line. Well, it's a, not a bad move. Uh, in a spot like this, I think Joe Zuger is content to get that. 14 yards. And the, the Hamilton bench, everybody's up. And here's what it comes down to. That great Hamilton defense. Can they stop that Winnipeg offense that's supposed to be able to penetrate it? We all boils down to the last two minutes of the season. Thornton flanks out wide to the left. Here comes Perkins in motion, and Kenny Plain goes back to throw. And the rush is on by Martinello. He throws the pass for Lewis, and he reaches up for it. He's no, no good. Don Southern almost intercepted. Don Southern almost intercepted, but as he bumped into one of his own players down there, Vino Cart. Let's take a look at this play on the isolated camera. As we pick up Leo Lewis, number 29. There he goes. And Kurt's doing a great job of staying with him. And Don Southern coming over there to get that ball. Second down and the 10 to go for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the Hamilton 47-yard line. Thornton again wide left. Lewis goes in motion left. Plain going back to throw. The rush is on. They've got him back there. He breaks out of one. He's still trying to get that ball away. And John Barrow. And Billy Ray Lachlan stop him on the 52. There's a minute and 14 seconds left to go. Uh, they put it on the 51-yard line. So the loss will be exactly four yards, making it third down and 14 to go. Now Nielsen comes out. Rawhouse goes in with the play from Coach Bud Grant. 
Remember how that uh, 62 game between these teams finished up? 28-27, finishing the next day. This is 22-16. 59 seconds left to go in the ball game. Thornton is out to the left. If they ever made a great pass, they better have it now. Here goes Plain. Back to throw again. He throws down the middle. The Lewis cannot hold on to the ball. They lose the ball. And Hamilton takes over. And Kenny and, Plain. And Zeno Kurt came out of nowhere there to just stick out a hand and tip that out of Leo Lewis's hand. And I tell you, Johnny, get over there just in time. And all the fast batters say that's no place for him to be in the middle of the line. He's supposed to be outside covering. 22 to 13, it was at three quarters. The only score of this play, this quarter, has been the field goal, and Hamilton has been able to hold. And Joe Zuger on that sneak, just trying to kill off the clock. There's 23 seconds left unofficially. And he picked up a couple at a second down at eight, but he's not even worried about yards. He'd be satisfied to uh, be third and ten when the game ends, as long as he's still got the football. And the 33,000 fans have not budged. They are now with 11 seconds left to go in the ball game, and he's taking a full time. As referee Ray Boucher has 11 seconds left in his career. Now four seconds, and we have Winnipeg offside. Joe Zuger holds the ball. And that could about end it. It does. The game is over. The gun sounds. Hamilton Tiger Cat finally broke the jinx against the great Winnipeg Blue Bomber team. You know, a few people, a few people adding up this score will take a look at the six points that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers gave away in safety touches. This is what they'll look at. They're not going to realize that if they had kicked the ball, it might have been 21 or a little bit far. They say the, the, the second guess is... Uh, We'll have a field day on this. Should they or shouldn't they have been giving away those safety touches? Well, we're going to uh, see the presentation of the trophy down below as they can clear that mob away. We'll be doing that in just a moment. Then we will be going uh, to the dressing rooms. And we will resume with more of our post-game activities after this message. Well, Sid Halter, the commissioner of the Canadian Football League, is having a tough time uh, moving in that crowd down there so they can get into a position to present that trophy to the Hamilton captains. Now, that's going to take a little sorting out down there. There's no question about that. But uh, the scoring was with uh, Don Southern single on the opening kickoff. So he's the uh, touchdown, convert by Southern, the safety touch given up by Plain. Then I Perkins made it 10 to 6. Lewis made it 12 to 10. And and then it moved ahead 13 to 10 and wound up 22 to 16 with the big third quarter surge by Hamilton. But see his touchdown, two safety touches in a single. And they had to do it against the wind. And they, at least with the wind in the third, they did it with and the then, wind in the third. And then in that fourth quarter, when that defense had to come through, when they had to do the job, that great Hamilton defense did it. They stood in there. They Kenny playing through just about everything that he could think at them. And in the final analysis, I have to say that that Hamilton defense was just that much better than that great Winnipeg offense. A great football game, an exciting football game. A lot of good plays out there, a lot of good tackling, a lot of good blocking. And like every other great cup, there's going to be an awful lot of second guessing after this. So Ralph Fazio, who had two cracks at it as a head coach, uh, unable to do it against this uh, Winnipeg club, has now finally done it. So in his third straight year, he has finally come through with one of the, the things that you really want in life, and that's the championship. And that was said, uh, said Halder trying to work his way through there again. The, uh, one of the battles, one of the toughest battles of the day is the one where they try to keep the goalposts from going down at the end. And the Toronto's finest is still trying to protect those valiantly. But I think they're trying to remind the fans that those are steel posts. They don't come down like the wooden ones, and they're trying to save them a lot of time and trouble. Okay, well, we're ready 
now to give you the final total to see what these statistics look like. And Gordy Walker has been busily putting those together, so let's see how they shape up. Gordy? Well, it's been quite a last half there, John, but the Winnipeg Blue Bombers had a big edge in first down, 17-7 to against Hamilton. Yards rushing was fairly even, 157 yards for Hamilton, 149 for Winnipeg. Winnipeg suffered badly there because they had a lot of yards deducted on those uh, intended safety touches. Pass attempt, Hamilton completed only two out of five, but they went for 71 yards. One was that 69-yard touchdown play. Winnipeg, seven out of 12 for 66 yards. One pass intercepted, and that was by uh, Hamilton. And fumbled, Hamilton fumbled five times and lost every one of them, which is almost some kind of a record for them. Winnipeg fumbled once and lost one. And penalties, Hamilton five for 40 yards, Winnipeg three for 15 yards. In the uh, punting department, very poor punting because of the wind, Hamilton attempted eight punts for a 32.7 yard average, Winnipeg nine for 24.7. The only two field goals attempted were by Winnipeg. Norm Winton completed one, hit the goal. Now it's done. Well, Gordy, I just, uh, I didn't see your game comparison at the beginning because I was downstairs, but I, I don't know if you can reflect just for a second or two on what these two records over the season might have looked like when you come to the final in their big meeting. Well, it looked pretty good. Winnipeg had an edge all the way down the line, and uh, Hamilton had a slight edge in yardage on passing, but on the yardage completed, Winnipeg had the edge, which they did during the season. All the way down pretty well, it reflected the season's average per game for both So Winnipeg was supposed to have the advantage in offense, which they did statistically. Hamilton was supposed to win it defensively, which they did. So really, that scoreboard is what tells you the story. That's it. Well, don't give the statistics some credit, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gordy, thanks very much for working, and thanks very much for working with us all. You're a nice guy. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, now we'll go back. We're getting ready to go downstairs, and uh, we'll be down here. The boys are getting ready over there. So while they're getting set, I just want to remind you we're going to resume with more of the post-game activities from the dressing room after this message. The beautiful 1966 meteor, a car you'll never forget. The 1966 meteor leaves a lasting impression a happy days kind of dazzle on everyone who test drives it. 56 Meteor's dramatic new styling, elegant luxury is something you remember vividly. We belong to the Meteor, admiration society. Even in the pleasant relaxation of your own living room, you just can't forget Meteor's deep foam padded bucket seats that surround you with a whole new world of comfort. Take the wheel of a Meteor. Just one test drive media. Longer than any other car in its class. There's so much car in media, so much excitement. Test drive the 66 media. But remember, media for 66 is great. So great that once you've tried it, you will never settle for anything less. Well, we're down in the Hamilton dressing room where, as per usual, pandemonium is supreme. We have the commissioner of the Canadian Football League. Mr. Sid Harder is going to make a presentation of the Grey Cup. Sid? Ready? Yes, sir. Uh, President Pat Mahoney and I are very pleased to present to you this historic trophy emblematic of the Championship of Canada. And my congratulations for an excellent game. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Harder. Thank you. John, great, very good. Great Wonderful. Year. Okay, guys. Here's Pat Mahoney, the president of the Canadian Football League. Pat? <laughs> Congratulations, John. Marvelous game. Caps off a wonderful season. One of the most exciting Grey Cup games in history, and I guess one of the most unusual. Thank it's your you, Pat. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Well, thank you. And our congratulations thank to you. Thank you very much. Uh, quite a victory for us. Head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats for three years. You've been in the Grey Cup three years, and you won it twice. That's pretty not bad. <laughs> well, this game's uh, rough today. This win was... Uh, was quite a factor. Yes, no doubt about it. We knew this from the start, and it was just a matter of juggling around and trying to come up with the right formula with it. That's all. It, it more, throws all your plans right out of the window. Right out the window. Yeah. You more or less have to play it by ear right, all, the way. all the way through. That's right. And there were just a number of ups and downs and situations, and I guess your emotions just went from one end to the other. It sure was. Throughout the course of the game, were there any particular points, Ralph, in the game that uh, thought you thought... Well, was... I thought we fumbled too doggone much. Otherwise, apart from that, overall, I thought we played well. That defense was great. All right, Ralph. Fine, thank thank you, you very much. And again, congratulations to you. Fred Scambatti is in here somewhere. 
Of course, he's got six foot two of John Barrow in front of him. Fred, uh, are you out there? Well, John Barrow, I just want to get a reaction from him. Ball game and the, you put the clinching tackle in there. It must have been a great day for you. Oh, Fred, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Since 1957, we've been waiting to beat one of Well, John, it's been a long time. I mean, frightening moments out there. They're coming. They were all frightening. It, it was a tremendous game. I think the Winnipeg ball club played excellent football. We were we were very fortunate to get a few, a, a, a couple of interceptions, a few fumbles, and it certainly made a big difference. John, it seemed to me that that line play out there, this was the knocking part of the ball game. It was interesting. It was certainly interesting, Fred. You got a long time to rest up for the summer. It's going to be nice. Thank you, Fred. Hey, what are you doing here? Do you know this is the outstanding Canadian of the year? Zeno Carp, how is it? Well, it's just great, just great. Uh, I've lost my voice. I've been hollering so much. Fred, I want you to do me a favor. I want to say hello to my kids at home. And I want to wish my father a happy birthday and my nephew Richard a happy birthday. It's, 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 it's perfect time. It's just great. Just great. Thanks, Fred. Good, good man. Brad or Ken? Ken Newen? Okay, let's get Garney Henry here. Come on, Garney. Come on in here. Face right. the camera. Right here, right How do you feel, Garney? Oh, just tremendous. I, I didn't. I thought we were going to have a, a tremendous ball game, just like we did. I figured our offense would score a little bit more, but believe me, we had a tremendous ball team. And it's just got to be the greatest. Tell me, were you happier this year than you were in 63? Well, I don't know. I think just about the same, really. But I think uh, this year is probably more satisfying because we had a uphill climb all the way. Very good. Fine, thank you. Okay, you got Angie John? Come on up there. Big Angelo Moskis. And Patch has been accused of a pretty tough ball out there. How's that line working, Angie? Uh, real tough today. It was uh, strictly uh, not a running game because of the field conditions. And the linemen had to be on their toes quite a bit today. Not too many you come back and win when you give so much away. Yeah, I think we were fortunate if we played good tight football. And I had this feeling a month ago because I know the attitude of this football team. What difference is it in the game that you played against them last time when they came back and beat you 26-20? Well, we, we had this in, our, in, in mind, don't forget. And we didn't want to give anything up. We played real tight ball right to the last. Congratulations. Time. Great Thank win. Thank you very much, John. Okay, okay, that's story, Brad. Got Dick Tohey here. Congratulations, Thank Dick. you, Ken. I can remember about a year ago or so you were traded. You've been in a couple of great double yes, finals. Yes, this is so. Day. This is so, Ken. Are you happy with the game today? Very happy, very happy. That good first touchdown run of yours must have been on your big throw. It was, it was. We, we, it's just something I just can't explain, Ken. It's just uh, coming from uh, nowhere and then all of a sudden we're champs. Congratulations, great champions, too. Thank you. Okay, Dick Tohey, now Fred. If there's a personal comeback story of the year in Canadian football, it's Marty Martinello. Marty, how do you feel about this one? Oh, I'm real happy, Fred. Very happy, in fact. I thought that he played a terrific game. I'm very happy to be the winner. Any one particular play you remember out there today, Marty? I can't remember any. Right now, I'm just too happy to remember any. And that you got the Tiger Cat stripes instead of the Argonaut blue. No blue today. No blue today. All black and yellow. Good. Marty Martinello. Now, uh, Brad, have you got Joe Zuger here? I think I...